One, when I was a student, I had to choose between brain science and physics to try to really understand the re fundamental reality. And I chose brain science. And now I see that the search for quantum gravity is really the, the where the action is. So well, what, what does that mean? Well, we currently have very good and successful theories for fundamental laws of physics. And one of them is the theory of general relativity, which is a theory of gravity. And this is the theory that was created by Einstein. And it's a theory about space-time. So it says that gravity is due to the shape of space-time. Uh, so big, heavy masses curve space-time and change the geometry of space-time. And that's why we experience the force of gravity. So that's what the theory says. And it's a wonderful theory. And it explains many aspects of our own universe. Um, the most uh, important of them is the expansion of the universe. Um, so it gives us. Uh, it tells us that the expansion of the universe is basically inevitable. And, uh, and I mean, Einstein himself tried to remove this prediction of the theory, and he called this his greatest mistake. Right. And uh, so it's a wonderful prediction of the theory. It's experimentally tested. And, and well, it really tells us, tells us a lot about the universe, that the universe uh, well, started being much smaller than it is now. Um, and then the other set of theories are the theories that describe particle physics. So they describe how matter works. And these theories are based on new rules of mechanics uh, that's called quantum mechanics. So quantum mechanics is a new form of uh, describing the dynamics of particles. And one of, the, one of its features is that uh, we cannot assign uh, positions and velocities to particles that are well-defined. Um, if we try to measure the position, then the velocity is not well-defined. So there is a fundamental fuzziness or uncertainty in our description of uh, the, of the microscopic world. And we have to use probabilities instead of certainties. Exactly, yeah. So many things are probabilistic. Um, uh, we cannot say exactly where the electron is. Mm -hmm. We don't, can only say where, what the probability is of finding yeah. the electron in a certain yeah. place. Um, on the other hand, there are some things that are ex extremely well defined in quantum mechanics, such as the energy levels of an atom. Mm -hmm. And we use these energy levels for making very precise uh, measurements of time and so on. Atomic clocks are based on this. Um, so it's a very precise theory. It's been tested extremely well. It's fundamental and crucial for describing matter. Yeah. Um, but nevertheless, uh, it's hard to put this theory together with gravity. Yeah. Uh, First of all, the gravity, yeah. general relativity, deals with a heavy structures exactly, yeah. on so, a very large macroscopic right, scale. Right, Quantum right. mechanics, fundamental structure right, of matter, right, probabilistic, right, small right, scale, very right, tiny. Right, right. Gravity is important for heavy things, <laughs> and quantum mechanics for small things. Yeah. Now, in our everyday life, uh, it's not, this is not a big problem because very small things are very light, so <laughs> gravity is not important. Um, very heavy things are very big, so quantum mechanics <laughs> is not important. However, there are situations uh, where it is important. The most notable of these situations is the beginning of the universe because there the whole universe, was, which is uh, extremely heavy, was concentrated in a very, very small region, a microscopic sized region. And so there quantum effects are very important. And so for that, for describing that, we need quantum mechanics and gravity, so a theory that puts them uh, together. We know some approximate ways of doing it, but we, we, we really, when you get to very small distances, you really need to do it well. You need, <laughs> you need to really put them together in a consistent way. OK, now, wh and, what is the problem? Yeah, so the problem is to uh, describe these two theories in a consistent way, so that when you calculate something, you get uh, reasonable answers. But what if you do, yeah, if you try to do it naively, yeah. you try to apply the rules of quantization that, that we usually apply for particle physics, but now to gravity. So we would say, for example, in analogy with the electromagnetic field, where uh, we quantize the electromagnetic field and we have a photon, photon. which is uh, the quantum of electromagnetic field. Then we would say, well, for gravity, we have gravitational waves. And then we quantize that, we have the graviton. But then uh, we should don't just have free gravitons, because gravitons carry energy, they interact with other gravitons. And when you try to describe these interactions in a quantum mechanical way, you find that uh, you get infinities. So you try to compute the uh, probability that something happens, and it gives you an infinity. So in and, going from the smooth uh, sort of analog mm -hmm. approach in, in, right. in electromagnetism, we, we went right. to the photon. That was exactly, the origin yeah. of quantum yeah. mechanics. Yeah. And, and that photon carries as the quantum of, of electromagnetism right. in, mm -hmm. in 
in bits, in pieces, as opposed to a continuous stream. Exactly. Yeah. And we know that's real, we know that works, yeah, and it's that measured. Works. Yeah, right. exactly, and it's crucial for describing it. Right, now to bring the two together, we have to do the same thing yeah, for, for gravity. gravity. And so we make up, I don't mm -hmm. mean that's, yeah. Yeah. We, we create a concept called a graviton. Exactly. Analogous to the photon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so now we're, we're, we're uh, making gravity in little pieces. Exactly, yeah. Okay, uh, but, but the problem is, yeah, you find some inconsistencies uh -huh. when you try to make these gravitons interact. Ah. Uh, it's crucial that the gravitons interact in a theory of, of gravity, right, yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. because it gra the gravitational force would be due to the exchange of gravitons. Okay. So you need to make them interact with matter and also with each other. When you do it with the photons, there's no problem. Yeah, yeah you, you can do it with photons. So photons interact with electrons, and uh, this is the theory of called quantum electrodynamics, right. and it's a very successful theory. It describes right. nature very well. Right. But now with the gravitons, you get infinities. Yeah, you get infinity. So it's not even that it doesn't describe nature. It just couldn't possibly describe nature because you get inconsistent answers. Oh, um, okay. And so the first goal is to just try to find a theory that gives you a consistent answer. And this has been surprisingly difficult. So it's been surprisingly difficult to find a theory that mm. gives you consistent answers, regardless of whether it agrees with nature or not. But, <laughs> and now a theory, but however, a theory has been found uh, that describes gravity in a consistent way, and it's called string theory. Mm -hmm. It was it had a long history, it was originally discovered in the context of strong interactions. Which is in the nucleus. In the nucleus, exactly, and then um, it was applied to gravity. Mm -hmm. it was, uh, according to this theory, the graviton is a small loop of vibrating string, and uh, you can describe the interactions between these strings, and uh, the interactions at long distances reduced to those of gravity, but they are changed at short distances in such a way that you get finite answers for mm -hmm probabilities and so on. This, this situation where you have theories that are incompatible, uh, that are very successful in their own uh, yeah. corners, <laughs> has arisen before in the history of physics. A good example is the, uh, the example of the loss of electricity and magnetism, where um, in the 1800s uh, people uh, had some laws to describe the, how currents, uh, that is to say motion of electric charges generate magnetic fields and then uh, these charges also interact electrically and so on. And they had some equations, but Maxwell modified the equations so as to make them compatible. Uh, and in doing so, he found the right set of equations. So we like, like to think that in string theory, the same thing will happen. That, uh, so we stumbled across this, uh, this theory of strings and uh, that this will be perhaps the right theory. But of course, this is a question we'll have to answer experimentally. <laughs> But string theory is a theory under construction that um, we are exploring, trying to understand better and better. But, well, let me now talk about um, the beginning of the universe where quantum me mechanics and gravity were important. And because it was very heavy and very small. It was, yeah, exactly. It was very heavy and very small. Um, and, and so when you have a, a universe that is expanding very rapidly, as uh, we have in our current theories of the very early universe, it's a theory called inflationary, uh, the inflationary theory of the early universe. So the universe was expanding very rapidly, and when you have rapid expansion of the universe, uh, quantum effects uh, are important, and they create uh, small inhomogeneities. So you cannot have an expanding universe that is ex purely uniform. Quantum mechanics implies a certain fuzziness in the universe. Um, so in the same way that quantum mechanics tells us that we cannot measure the position and velocity of an electron, we cannot determine the shape of the universe exactly. I mean, we cannot determine it to be exactly uniform. It will have to have some inhomogeneities. And then uh, after the universe expanded, uh, these inhomogeneities, which started their life being quantum mechanical, now become classical and become stretched over very, very long distances, which uh, we now see in the cosmic microwave background radiation. And, and reflected in the galaxies and stars and planets. Yeah, exactly. It's unbelievable yeah. that the yeah. quantum mechanical uh, uh, fuzziness mm -hmm. in the very early universe, smaller than a single atom, mm -hmm. has now been transformed yeah, into yeah. galaxies This is, this, this is what I find astonishing. And <sighs> if the universe was perfectly uniform, the galaxies would have mm -hmm. never formed and right. we wouldn't be here. Right. So quantum mechanics uh, was crucial for leading to the events that uh, <laughs> create the galaxies. 
And so the quantum fuzziness is not something restricted to very small things right. and the deepest uh, corners of matter, but <laughs> right. it's actually important for the beginning of the universe and even for the biggest things we right. see in the universe, right. like galaxies right. and, and so on.